Welcome back to Station Ears. And I think in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to work on a storage system that's a little bit better than this. Just the extension, really. Uh, adding more of these pressure regulators to keep these refill canisters, and they probably won't be in here anymore. You know, we'll probably pipe the actual stuff downstairs and into uh, a better room. But just thought I'd give you a, a sort of an upcoming, I guess, update of what I'm going to be working on. Next up is going to be that system. So we're going to have a room for gas storage. Um, that's probably like this, but much bigger because we're going to have to put those tanks in place. Um, those large tanks, not even the, these portable ones, but the big ones that we got downstairs for the oxygen. Uh, we're going to want one for each gas. And at the moment we have, well, one for each useful gas, <laughs> nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, CO2, and then probably, um, maybe even, yeah, maybe even tanks for mixes. So we could have a furnace mix and a... An air mix. Not that I don't. Not that I'm going to be using the air mix at the moment. But if we had enough nitrogen, which we don't, never have enough nitrogen, <laughs> we could have an actual regular air tank with you know, 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and other bits and pieces. Uh, the fact of the matter is, at the moment, everything's O2. So you know, we can leave things for O2. So the main one, O2 and hydrogen, we definitely need. CO2 and nitrogen, uh, less so. CO2. We'll probably need a little bit more when we get to hydroponics. And we will get there, don't worry. I know a few people are waiting for hydroponics. But this episode, I thought we'd actually take a look at some new blocks, uh, or rather a new block uh, for the first part of this. And uh, not quite sure what we're going to get to for the rest of the episode. Let's just get inside. Yeah, let's cancel you. And we can head down to our furnaces again. Don't worry, I promise nothing to do with the furnaces. They're working fine. I just wanted to give you an idea of how to create a power sort of monitoring system. You can use your, you know, your uh, little tablet, this thing, with not the atmospheric analyzer, but the network analyzer in it. However, it's a pain to keep swapping the cartridges out or you carry a, a tablet for a specific purpose or stuff like that. I thought I'd give you an option for assessing how much power you're actually using for the various setups. To do that, there's a brand new block. This just came out. It's called a cable analyzer. So it's going to work just like a pipe analyzer is. And we're going to just pop this down. And if we look at it, you can see we're actually using 365 watts. And how much are you providing? Yeah. So the potential is giving us what this transformer is allowing out. Uh, we're not using it, but that's what that transformer is set to. So at the moment, requires 365 watts. So with everything on, we need 365 watts at idle. None of these furnaces are on. Okay, so let's turn the computer off for a second and then just take a look. 165 watts. So this computer is 200 watts versus 8, 9, 10, 11 active electronic devices so yeah if you can get away with smaller numbers of electronic devices do so but i'm not even sure with this computer for the way we set it set up to do all that with electronics it's going to be comparable amounts anyway uh, this is rolling around um let's just throw you over there and you can hold down q to throw by the way if you didn't already know that <laughs> it's almost like uh, space basketball uh yeah some coal let's just put over the right place so, yes, just thought I'd give you an idea of how to modify that, uh, monitor that even. And we can go one step further. We can, let's just put a console in, shall we? Uh, in fact, not a console, a, a reader. We're going to need some power and some data, so that is fine. That's better. We got everything cabled up quite nicely. Know that you need to get the cable out of this cable analyzer and make it available to a logic reader. You, you need, because there's multiple values you can pull off this, we're gonna to have to tell it which values we want. So in this case, we're gonna look at the cable analyzer and let's look at the power actual, shall we? So 375, good, that's gonna be in watts. So if I just grab my little renamer and let's say furnace actual power and turn that back off again, just to save some power. And then here we can look at furnace actual power and uh, we're going to choose the output, aren't we? So we're going to need to build 
a display. I haven't used any of these in my current playthrough, but if you go to uh, construction kit consoles, you can build these con this console that we've, you know, this console dual, if you like, that we've got. It's two different versions of that now. That does uh, help for airlocks and stuff, stuff like that. I didn't have that ability when I built my, my airlocks. But there's other things too. So we can have a console monitor. And will you let me... Let's just flip you around. Okay. Sort of nice. Different, uh, different look to the other one. Uh, let's uh, just deconstruct you for a second. But of course, what we want is the largest possible LED display. <laughs> There's no reason to go for any of the small ones. Oh, can I not build you? Why can't I build you? Eh, I should have the option to. Can it, oh, does it have to go? Nope, that's not working. How about medium? Nope. Why aren't you working? I can only put small? That's so very odd. Um, anyway, <laughs> not that I need anything more than the small, but uh, if they're not buildable yet, no worries. I could just make a mistake though, but I don't see what it was. Um, unless they need additional materials, that, that makes no sense. Uh, eh, anyway, flip that on. We can take a look at that. that takes 10 watts for an LED. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose. Um, pretty bright LED. Uh, anyway, so we look at furnace actual power and we can look at the output. Let's just uh, grab, uh, where's my screwdriver gone? There we go. We can, what's it called? Just LED display. Uh, you should be in here somewhere. There we go. LED display small and then logic writer. We want to write the setting and turn you on. 395. And of course it's 10 watts for this logic writer, it seems as well. So that's okay. So if we have a look at this, 385, 395. Okay, and if I turn on a furnace, let's just see just how much power a furnace takes up, shall we? Uh, pop you in, go. Interesting. So it looks like it's consuming power, but only for each, because um, that was a, a stack of three. So it's, it looks like the power is only being used up every time each one of them is being processed. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, a little bursty amount of power, but that's a 500 watts. So technically with both of these, um, that would be 1400 watts is the maximum we would need. So, you know, we can just limit this with 1400 watts if we wanted to. And that would work perfectly well. You can do that and that will work nicely to monitor your systems. Of course, we can pipe now this, this cable wherever we want to back up to the base if you want a kind of indication of where all your power is being used, have a big control room, do whatever you like. Um, so these have been in the game for a little while, haven't used them before, I haven't mentioned them, but these are brand new. So monitoring power, you can do with that. Of course, we are going to be using these to monitor volume or pressure or temperature when it comes to the gas control room. So I just wanted to introduce them now. However, also new, aside from this, is the ability to, I think, set the mode on the LED displays. Um, and that's one option. What we could do is... Oh, I don't want another computer. Can we just use another writer? That will be useful. Do I have enough cable? Maybe. Let's just, uh, I'm gonna need a, a writer and a reader. And let's actually turn it, hopefully so I can get mostly free power. Uh, that'll be a three-way corner. That will be a four-way junction. Uh, actually, no, I can't actually put it there. I need to watch out for where it's pulling stuff from. Okay, and here's the simplest version actually set up. Um, I've got the logic writer, and this is set to read from this memory chip and then just write out to the LED display uh, the mode. Okay, so it looks just normal at the moment, but if we get that screwdriver out 
and we change this, we can change modes. So this is mode two at the moment, which is happens to be green. If we decrease it uh, and turn on the writer, we should get white. Decrease it again, we get blue, uh, amber, if we go up, and then so two, three, and four are respectively green, amber, red. Is that different to the yeah, so you've got we've got yellow as well. And then black. I'm not sure if black's a useful one, but there's a bunch of different modes, even hot pink, uh, or purple even. Oh, that's purple. Okay. And yeah, so it has 16 colors, it looks like, uh, ish. Or less, maybe? No, 12 colors, because it's 0 through to 11. Okay, so 12 colors, and you should get the idea here. We can do something like, I mean, I'm not going to do it in the, on this episode. If you really want me to do a tutorial on this one, I can, but it should be fairly straightforward at the moment with you. Basically, we can uh, read from here and say, uh, using, you know, math units, if it's less than a certain value, we can put the value in a memory chip and in a few memory chips. Uh, if it's less than, I don't know, 410, then green. If it's less than, I don't know, 910, amber, so or less than equal, yeah, less than 910 in this case, because it's 405, and that would be 905. Less than 910, then amber, you know, and anything else, um, red. <laughs> or whatever you actually wanted to do there, you could have a status, so you can just take a quick glance, and at a glance you can see what your power situation is. So, yeah, I thought that would be useful, as it is brand new, that, well, at least the mode, of this to control the color is brand new and this analyzer to actually get data about the power is new so yeah i've got I quite like it for now however i'm going to leave electronics on the wall but we've got the analyzer display i can see how much it's actually using at the moment save a little bit of power from our battery situation so yeah i like it nice to get some more information i think we're probably gonna to have to look at that again for the cable and not the cable the pipe Analyzer. Once we get a new setup uh, like the one in here, uh, we get pressure and temperature, and then we want to probably get ideally volume. Uh, not not volume. Um, moles. You know the quantity of the gas somehow out as well. Once we have our gas storage system. And one other thing, it should be obvious, but uh, your solar panels were generally going to generate maybe up to 450 watts. It depends how accurate your tracking electronics or even computer is. Uh, mine isn't perfect because, as I've mentioned before, they don't go fully tilted all the way down and fully tilted all the way down because they can't. There's about 15 degrees of room, so that 30 degrees of missing causes a correction factor. At, uh, so they actually gain up to 450 or five, probably 500 when it's at noon, because uh, that's perfect output. And they're going to be slightly off, getting worse and worse towards sunrise and sunset. Not too much of a problem, though. I mean, it's going to be 430 watts, let's say, per panel. And it's going to be, let's just treat it as if uh, it's going to be half that, so 215 watts per panel, because half the time, obviously night time, they're going to be in darkness. So 215 per, uh, per panel times however many panels. So I've got, you know, uh, how many have we got? Uh, three, six, nine, ten. <laughs> nice round number. Okay, so I've got two kilowatts, essentially, of power coming in. So if you have uh, power management around your base, or at least the power displays around your base, you get an idea of how much how that's being used. Otherwise, of course, you can look at uh, things such as the network analyzer on any particular piece of cable. If you've got lots of subnetworks, you can look at the inside of that subnetwork versus the outside, etc., etc. Lots of stuff you can do that way, but... Having some kind of permanent emplacement is just one of those extra things that we can do. And also just to show you the colors of pipes with once they're spray painted, I quite like the, the black color for vacuum, white for oxygen. And of course, we've got these other colors that we can use quite nicely for nitrogen, which we'll never have enough of <laughs> ever. Hydrogen, which is the, the tank that I think I got 
I'm not sure where I got this one from, actually. It's a fuel tank. Maybe it was from the welder or something along those lines. Anyway, I'll probably keep that colour for hydrogen. See who haven't decided on yet. And then, you know, obviously we'll deal with everything else. But yeah, the gas storage episode is coming next episode. Um, I'm going to have to cut this one short, unfortunately. I do have to go and sort something out that is in the real life world, unfortunately. That's going to cause a bit of a delay. And I have to get these gas storage stuff sorted out for the next episode. So I do apologize. So feel free, definitely don't thumbs up this video just because it, it's too short. I mean, come on. You know, I want them to be at least 30 minutes to actually go forward with as much as possible. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the little the episode that was. And tomorrow we'll carry on with a full size one for gas storage. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.